Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Cessna tests electrical power on their longitude jet. NAA president stepping down. A Tuskegee Airman is remembered. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's June 16th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. In the world of electricity, there's an old saying that goes, electricity should never create noise or smoke. It appears Cessna passed that test as they made the first power-up of the electrical distribution system on their Cessna Citation Longitude Super Midsize Jet. Scott Ernest, the president and CEO of Textron Aviation, said, We continue to meet our milestones through an industry-leading development schedule in order to get the longitude into the hands of our customers. The power on stage allows our team to begin verifying the aircraft's electrical power system and paves the way for functional test and engine runs that will get us to first flight in the coming months. It's reported that the first flight is planned sometime during the rapidly approaching summer. Changes are taking place at the National Aeronautic Association as Jonathan Gaffney, the president and CEO of the NAA, announced that he will resign from his position effective September 30th of this year. Jim Albaugh, chairman of the NAA, said, The entire aviation and aerospace industry are extremely grateful for the tremendous amount of skill, work, and time that Jonathan put into NAA over the last nine years. He has restored a very important organization in our industry, and he will be missed by all of aerospace. Having started at NAA in 2007, he is one of the longest tenured chief executives in the history of the 111-year-old organization. Under his leadership, NAA has recovered from near default to seven consecutive years of sound financial results. NAA's three primary responsibilities are aviation awards, aviation records, and the support of air sports in America. In this process, he revived and strengthened the NAA's relationships with numerous affiliated organizations across the nation with which it works. NAA will commence a search for a new president and CEO in the coming weeks. After the break, another Tuskegee Airman has gone west. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Errol TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at errol-news.net. Another Tuskegee Airman, who was a veteran of the Air Force and the Army Air Force, has gone west. Second Lieutenant Malvin G. Whitfield was laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery last week. Whitfield distinguished himself as the first U.S. military member to win Olympic gold medals while serving his country. Whitfield joined the Army Air Corps in 1943 as a Tuskegee Airman, one of more than 1,000 African-American pilots who fought in World War II. Whitfield established the Whitfield Foundation in 1989. The organization promoted athletics around the world with scholarships, training programs, and equipment donations. According to the organization's website, the late President Ronald Reagan wrote the following about Whitfield. Whether flying combat missions over Korea, or winning gold medal after gold medal at the Olympics, or serving as an ambassador of goodwill among the young athletes of Africa, you have given your all. This country is proud of you and grateful to you. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update. 
highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative. Today, we see that partnership at work. Our Airborne Partner Initiative encourages aviation interests of all kinds to work with us to get their word out in a format that is designed to be exciting, informative, and accurate. A perfect example of this occurred last year at EAA AirVenture 2015, when along with our Airborne Partnership friend EAA, we produced the AirVenture Innovation Preview. The Air Venture Innovation Preview, which we call AIP, was a stunningly successful program that drew nearly 100,000 eyeballs to all things Air Venture, and it's going to happen again this year, but on a much larger scale. The AIP is a massive news teaser, an invitation to build serious buzz and promote all the amazing innovations that make Oshkosh one of the most outstanding examples of ingenuity and aero entrepreneurialism. Starting a few days prior to AirVenture 2016, a number of carefully screened companies will have the chance to participate in an expertly produced online news program produced by Aerol TV. It will wet the whistle of the aviation population with 30 to 40 or more short three to four minute online multimedia presentations offering a glimpse into what will be really new at Oshkosh this year. Your company can be part of AIP excitement but time and availability of slots are running out. Potential participants are urged to contact ANN as soon as possible to get the details on how to be invited to reserve a slot to participate in this year's must-view event. Don't wait! After these messages, ALPA approves of Canadian Drone Safety Initiative. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The Airline Pilots Association International supports the Canadian government's recently launched efforts to promote safe operation of unmanned aircraft systems. ALPA has encouraged the safe integration of UAS and worked with the Canadian and U.S. governments to this end. A new lightweight fixed-wing UAV has been introduced by Sentara LLC. The company says their Phoenix 2 may be the most precise drone available today. At only 4 pounds, the drone is hand-launched and can carry multiple sensors. The FAA has granted an STC to Flight Resource for a reverse pitch option for the MT Composite 2 or 3 blade propeller for Cessna aircraft. This innovative propeller is available for Cessnas equipped with the Continental 0470 and larger engines. Bell Helicopter unveiled the Bell 505 Jet Ranger X at the Canadian Embassy in Tokyo last week. This is the first time the Bell 505 has been on display in Japan and marks the beginning of a four-month demonstration tour across the region. A pair of King Stallions conducted external load flight tests last week. Each CH-53K carried 12,000 pound loads with one aircraft conducting flight expansion tests and the other conducting a training flight in preparation for an operational test with the U.S. Marine Corps. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. 
We are sad to say that by the end of the month, the Virginia Aviation Museum, located on the grounds of Richmond International Airport in Central Virginia, will be no more. Built in 1987 and originally intended as a temporary facility, the structure housing the Aviation Museum has reached the end of its useful life. The collection of aircraft will be relocated so they can continue to be preserved as artifacts. Museum spokeswoman Chrissy Caldwell said that there have been several attempts to find a new home for the museum, but they have not located an appropriate facility. About 13,000 people visited the museum last year, so Caldwell said attendance was not a factor in the decision to close. The museum houses 38 airplanes ranging from a World War I SPAD to an F-14 Tomcat. No specifics were given about where the various aircraft would eventually land. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Airborne Unlimited stream daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. From the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource, I believe I can fly.